How will you be affected by the largest interest rate hike in more than 20 years? You're already suffering under 40 year high inflation and now you could be stuck paying more interest rate on credit cards and other expenses. Joining us this morning, we have a live interview with Gordon Fellows, president and CEO of the Mississippi Bankers Association. Good morning and thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I know it's so early and you're joining us all the way from near the state's capital. So again, thank you. But what kind of impact do you think Wednesday's interest rate hike will have on folks here in Mississippi? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Let's let's remember how we got here, right? Uh, two years ago when the pandemic started, uh, unemployment just skyrocketed mm -hmm. and, and the Fed has a, what's called a dual mandate. They, they're, they're tasked with keeping unemployment low and keeping prices stable, right? So you don't see a bunch of price spikes for goods. Um, and so when unemployment started skyrocketing, um, they took immediate action to, um, to, to help offset that uh, by creating more demand so people would spend more money and they lowered the interest rates to effectively zero, right? So, so we've been living in an historically low interest rate environment through the pandemic. And now as the economy moves out of the pandemic, um, it, it was the rates were always going to go up, right? To sort of get to a more normal point. Now, I don't know that any of us expected the inflation um, that, that has sort of come along with all the stimulus that, mm -hmm. that Congress had to push through to, to, to move the economy out of the pandemic. Um, so, so it's a challenging time, um, but, but rates were always going to go back up and, and sort of normalize and they're probably going to keep going up. So, so, so the question of, you know, what can we expect? Well, um, I think rates are going to continue to rise, right? You've already started to see it uh, have an impact in, uh, in, in the mortgage space. You know, the Fed started to raise rates in, in March. Uh, interest uh, mortgage rates nationally were around 3%. Then they're up to five now. They're probably going to keep going up. But I don't know how much that's going to impact the housing market in the short term because there's um, there's there's a lack of supply in homes right now, right? Mm -hmm. So because in large part because of all the supply chain issues um, that we've had to deal with. So um, I, I guess I, I think that the, the the action the Fed took yesterday is, is going to ultimately be helpful in, in tamping inflation down. Okay. Right. Um, there's prices a, a function of supply and demand, and um, hopefully hopefully by raising rates that. That, that begins to press demand down a little bit. And uh, then supply, you know, the pandemic is gonna keep dealing us issues with supply, I think. And so hopefully, uh, hopefully it's enough to sort of offset that. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do now to prepare for the financial impacts of these higher interest rates? Yeah, you know, the, the best advice I have is go talk to your banker, right? Sort of look at your savings, um, make sure you're getting a return on your savings. And, and then if you've got uh, if, if you've got credit needs, think about how you need to restructure them now because I think rates are going to keep going up. Don't don't wait four or six months to, to restructure, right? If right. you've got a if you've got a need to borrow money, um, go work that out now because it, it, it's going to continue to rise. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, get and you, know, you really hinted at. Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. Sorry, no, it cut off for me a little bit, so I like missed you. But you can keep going. Uh, so I, we have a lot of really smart bankers in this mm -hmm. state, really, really good folks who, who are really, really keyed in on this. And, and each individual you know, bank customer has different needs and the bankers understand that. So they can provide a lot of um, tailored uh, guidance and help uh, to individual customers, you know, depending on what their circumstances are. Yeah. So when you do factor in the additional interest, people will be paying on top of these increased costs of gas, groceries and other goods, which is something you've kind of hinted at just a little bit, but exactly how much of a financial pinch, if you're able to uh, say, do you think that Americans will be feeling in the coming months? Yeah, it, we're, we're going to have a pinch in the short term. And, and the hope is that in the long term, that means that prices don't stay elevated, mm -hmm. right? Like we kind of look back in a couple of years and we sort of see, you know, the, the savings that you've acquired or accrued over your career in a 401k or whatever, that you still have equal purchasing parity to what you had today, right? right. That, that's the goal here. So prices are going to go up a little bit um, and, and it, just due to the rates. Uh, demand is really driving prices right now, though, and lack of supply, right? So, mm -hmm. so those are really the the supply issues are really, I, I think, the, the the major issues here. And hopefully, hopefully by raising rates, that reduces demand a little bit and allows supply to sort of fix itself. I hope that makes sense. It's it, there's there's a lot of moving pieces in this for sure. Well, Mr. Fellows, again, thank you so much for joining us so early this morning. We really appreciate it and we'll really take in that advice. I need to call a banker today. But um, again, thank you so much for joining us.
Yeah, thank you for the opportunity.